everyone, welcome back to my channel and happy new year. This week's video is all about healthy, productive and realistic habits for 2021. So, so glad to see the back of 2020 and this year is all about incorporating healthy, gentle habits into our lifestyles. There is no space in 2021 for strict resolutions. I'm just going to list out 10 things that I plan on doing this year to help me kind of glide through this year with as much ease as possible. Okay, number one, budget, budget, budget. Now, if I learned anything from 2020, that it is so dangerous to have a credit card you can't pay off or overspending more than you earn. I've done both those things in the past and now we know that no job is a guarantee, no paycheck is a guarantee. So it's so important to not spend beyond your means. So if you feel like your finances are maybe just a little bit out of control, then the best thing to do is just write everything down on a spreadsheet. Look at what you are spending and then actually work out what you can afford to spend and stick within that budget. So I write everything out. And once you actually see it on paper, you realize it's so much more than you thought. So all those random subscriptions you don't even use, get them canceled. Keep a lid on your spending in the supermarket. That's literally the only place I spend my money right now. There are apps that can help you with this as well. So Mint is one of them. And it means you can just track your spending. You put everything into the one app and then they will show you how your budget is divided up amongst all the kind of different portions of your income. Um, it's just so much easier to see it laid out like that. Number two start saving. Once the budget has been set, it's time to figure out how much you can afford to allocate off and have in a savings account. Now, I was never a saver before, and the only way I actually really started saving was looking at the percentage I save, which is 10% every month. I now look at that figure and tell myself it's not my money to spend. So just like my tax, when I get paid, my tax goes into a separate account, and now when I get paid, my tax and my savings go into separate accounts. That way, everything after that is now mine to spend, mine to budget, bills, everything. Make sure it comes off first, and you're not allowed to spend it, it goes in a separate account. That way, it's guaranteed to be saved. Next up, you can also check if your bank do a roundup savings account, so I do this with Monzo and every time I spend any transaction, all the pennies rounded up to the next pound are put in a separate savings account, and this is a slow build, but it happens behind the scenes, you don't even realize it, it's not noticeable, and slowly but surely, you build up that rainy day fund. Number three on the list is read more. So whether you are isolating, you're in lockdown, or even just have the odd hour in a day, spend that time reading instead of scrolling on the internet, it is so much better for you and whilst I am guilty of scrolling away on my phone for hours a day, my screen time is up like 500% this year. I never regret the time I spend reading, whether it's fiction or non-fiction. It's actually been said that reading fiction is so healthy for our minds because first of all it's escapism and who doesn't want to escape from the reality we're in right now. And secondly because it's said to help us gain more empathy and I feel like we could all be a bit more empathetic at the moment. Also, obviously, non-fiction kind of goes without saying. It's so educational. You get to learn other people's experiences and realizations and findings um, and so many other factual things that don't exist within like, your bubble. So yeah, I do, I do non-fiction reading in the morning and then I'll do fiction before I go to sleep. Number four, choose a workout that you love. I swear, if you find a workout that you love, it is always worth getting out of bed for. I used to hate exercising, and now that i find something that I love, I actually am happy to work out, and it's not for physical results, it's completely for emotional, mental well-being, and the physical results are just a benefit of it, so I love Pilates. But it can literally be anything from an hour's walk in the park, getting some fresh air, to boxing, skipping, literally anything, but if you find something that you truly love, you are going to want to work out, and I just feel that it's been so helpful for me. I so easily fall off the exercise wagon and get in like a downward spiral. And then when I get back on it and I'm exercising consistently, I feel so good and I will never ever learn from this. Number five, meal planning. So if you wanna to stick to number one on this list and get a good budget, then no more takeouts or no more unplanned takeouts. So obviously it's so deflating opening the fridge after a long day, you're tired and you have no imagination on what to cook and everything in your fridge looks crap. So 
Meal planning at the start of the week helps so much. First of all, it helps you save money because you're only buying food that you're gonna cook. This also saves on wastage as well. And you can visualize what you're having for dinner that night. You can get excited for it. I just find that as well, it's a really good way of like incorporating lots of different foods into your diet, having a lot of variety. I always find as well that the best time to meal plan is when you're not hungry and when you're full of energy. So you have lots of inspiration to think up nice stuff. I usually find my recipe inspo on Pinterest, um, through family and friends, through some of my favourite cookbooks, or we kind of just try and get creative and think up new things ourselves as well. So I've got a whole recipe section on my blog which you can check out, I will link below. I'll also link below anything else that I've talked about today on this video, it will all be in the comments. Number six, declutter. Declutter your mind, declutter your house, declutter your toxic friendship group, declutter everything. So I feel that we live in this really busy, productive society and I feel that it just creates burnout for the most of us and for the rest of us it just makes us feel like we're not keeping up or doing enough. So scrap all that and just focus on yourself, block out the noise, declutter the to-do list. So instead of having 25 things on a to-do list, just have five manageable tasks a day and then you'll complete those 25 things in that week. It's such a clearer, easier way to work and function. Same goes for your house. I mean, we've spent enough time in our homes this year or last year to know what we dislike about them. So get rid of that junk, have clean, minimalist space. Same goes for your mind and your toxic friendship group. Block out that noise, focus on what's good for you. If anyone's bringing negativity into your life, then remove them. You have no time to have those people around you. Number seven, <laughs> create a great morning routine. Now this is different for everyone because everyone functions differently at different times of day. I am not a morning person, but I have trained myself to want to get out of bed. I'm not saying you have to get up at 5 a.m. either, because I certainly don't, but you need to allocate enough time in the morning to do all the tasks you wanna do to make yourself feel good about your day. So for me, it's wake up, I like to do a 10 minute meditation session, I walk my dog in the park and get some fresh air, I make my to-do list and drink my coffee whilst I'm making my to-do list. I find all these things so calming and therapeutic that once I actually start working, I feel so much better about the day ahead of me. Your morning routine could be totally different to this, but just know exactly what you wanna do, work out a, a realistic time frame for it, and then get up that amount of time before you need to start your day. Number eight, also create a great bedtime routine. So just as important, and this is a cycle now and it never ends, you've gotta have a good bedtime routine to feel alive to get out of bed on that good morning routine, and so on and so on. For me, that's less screen time before bed. I know that the blue light is not good for me just as I'm trying to wind down. I like to cleanse, wash my face, do my nighttime skincare routine that I have gotten so good at in lockdown. That is like the best perk about being at home all the time. Then I'll read a chapter or two of my book and then it's lights out aiming by 10.30, but that doesn't always happen. Also three times a week before bed, write in my wellness journal, so it's a bit like a gratitude journal, and I write down what went well that day or those last few days, I write what I'm grateful for and what I wanna work on. I know this isn't for everyone, I'm not pushing this on anyone, but I have started journaling the last month and I have found it's had a huge positive effect on me, so I would recommend. Number nine, take each day as it comes. We have absolutely no idea what this world is gonna be like in a month or 10 months. I feel that there's no point in making plans, booking holidays, doing all this stuff, which then you're gonna, you could potentially be let down by, have to cancel or lose money on. If, you, if you're willing to take the risk, then great, that's fine. But for me, it's not worth the stress. And I just wanna see my family and I just don't know when that's gonna be. We had to cancel our Christmas together and I kept saying it's gonna be February, we'll drive to Scotland. Now that's looking so unlikely, I've just stopped because it's not worth pretending that there's dates in the diary when they're gonna get removed. So I just take each day as it comes, wake up and I see this whole day as one tiny part of my whole life and the following day and the following day. And I just focus on that as my whole world for the next 24 hours, and I just find it's a much more manageable way emotionally to deal with the letdowns that 
this last 12 months has been. Number 10. Accept that you cannot control everything. Now I know this is easier said than done, but once you get into this mindset, life becomes a bit easier and simpler. Instead, focus on what you can control in your surrounding environment, all of the above. It's tough, but once you do, you'll give yourself so much more peace in your own life. So those are my 10 healthy, productive and realistic habits for 2021. Hope you enjoyed and hope you could even take just one tiny thing from this and it's been worth your while watching. I've also written it out in a blog post, so if you want to go back to it then I've linked that below and you can read it there. I hope you're all doing really well and I know that 2021 has not got off to the start that we all kind of hoped it would be and 2020 didn't stay in 2020 um but who is surprised? Wherever you are in the world I hope you're okay. We're in London and we're still in lockdown 3.0 and just kind of riding it out now. Uh, thank you so much for watching my video and I will see you next week with another video. Bye.